Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 1st, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Since today was the first official day of the 2024 season, I decided to get out early. I arrived at Braddock Bay Park around 7.15 a.m. and there was still a layer of snow on the ground. There were some galls flying around and most of them were herring galls like this one. This is a first winter herring gall. And any of these immature galls that are really dark underneath on the body, kind of dirty looking, these are herring galls. And they're also a bit bulkier looking than the smaller ring-billed galls. And here's an adult herring gall. So we see that it's very white underneath. We see that it has a bill that does not have that black ring that we would see on ring billed galls, but rather just sort of a little red dot. And we see that the wingtips here have black with some white spots in them. My main reason for going out so early was to scan through the ducks on the bay. There were several male red winged blackbirds singing from the marsh. Here we have some mute swans, which can be identified by their orange bills and the black on the face here. I'm not sure what this one's doing with its neck. Um, there were around 70 mute swans out on the bay today, and this is a non-native species that sometimes are seen as a nuisance because they're very aggressive towards the native birds, and they can be destructive to the underwater vegetation when they feed. Here we have a male redhead, and I spent most of the past two months down in Delaware, where redhead is really, really hard to get in the winter. There's most of the other kinds of ducks around, but redheads are sort of a nemesis bird. I never did get one this winter, so it's nice to see so many here at Braddock Bay. There were, I'd say, a few hundred out on the bay today. Here we have a scop, and based on the rounded shape to the head, I would say this is probably a greater scop. The green iridescence to the head is another supporting field mark. Usually greater would show green, lesser can show purple, but that's not always exact and it depends on the angle of the sun. So you have to be careful about using that field mark. Here we have some northern pintails. You can see four males. They're the ones that have the brown face and some white that goes up the neck. And they also have those long tails. And then we see two plainer females as well. Here we have a female hooded merganser, and I'm not going to judge because that's usually what my hair looks like in the morning too. In addition to the mute swans out on the bay, we also had these two swans that have completely black bills. And if you look at the bird on the right here, we see some yellow in front of the eye, and that's usually a good field mark for tundra swan and helps eliminate the similar trumpeter swan. Now this other swan doesn't really show any yellow in the face, but... Based on the fact that it's the same size as this bird that we know is a tundra swan, I would say that they're both tundra swans. And if you have them in direct comparison to mute swans, tundra swans are quite a bit smaller, whereas trumpeter swans would be about the same size as the mute swans. Looking far out over Lake Ontario, I could see some flocks of migrating snow geese low over the water. And here's an example of what the bay looked like. You can see some mute swans here in the middle. In the foreground, I can see an out-of-focus American coot. Towards the left center, I can see some canvas backs. In the back, there's some Canada geese. So just a lot of different species of ducks mixed in. I see widgeon, there's probably redhead and scop mixed in here as well, and probably many other species. This great blue heron was part of a group of three, and we don't normally see them quite this early in the season, but with the warm temperatures and early spring, it's not too unusual that species like this are starting to show up already. Here's a male common merganser. Notice the orange bill, green head, and white body. And also notice the white patches on the top of the wing. And the first sign of raptors for the day were a few bald eagles hanging around. Here's a bald eagle perched at the top of what we call the eagle tree, which is a tree out in front of the hawk watch where the eagles like to perch. Here we have two common golden eyes. And notice that on the male down here in the bottom right that they have a big white circle on the face that's really distinctive and also notice how much white they have on the upper wing. Here's part of another group of snow geese and notice with the snow geese that they're white overall but their necks are relatively short and they also have black on the wingtips. Altogether we had about 450 snow geese migrate over today. I was watching this bird come in towards me when it did a half barrel roll flipping upside down and as soon as I saw that behavior, I knew it wasn't a crow, but rather a common raven. So you can see ravens have large bills, and 
They just look a little bit lankier than crows. It looks like you took the wings and stretched them out a little bit and grabbed the head and tail and stretched them out a little bit. Around 9.30 a.m., I went up on the Hawkwatch platform ready to start the day. You can see it was a beautiful sunny day with just a few clouds, sort of a high layer of clouds moving in. There was a layer of snow on the ground in the morning that melted as the day went on. Overall, the winds were out of the southwest and were light to moderate, so a really good wind direction and speed for us, which resulted in a decent day for this date. This early in the season, we don't really get huge days, but it was a moderate day and really enjoyable to be out. Here we have a raptor, and let's try to figure out what we're looking at. First of all, look at the shape. This bird has a really long tail. And look at the way that it's holding the wings. They're almost touching in that upstroke. So this is a really big flap. And we also see a lot of white feathers fluffed out here. So there's a couple things going on here. First of all, this is an adult Cooper's Hawk. And what it's doing is this big territorial flap that they do, especially if they see another Cooper's Hawk coming into their territory, they'll do this really exaggerated, big, slow flap, which I guess probably makes them look bigger than they actually are, just to try to intimidate and chase off the other bird. And here's another angle of the same bird, and you can see that Cooper's hawks have relatively large heads compared to the very similar sharp-shinned hawk, which have smaller heads. Here we have an American robin, perhaps another sign of an early spring, and I always think robins are really sharp-looking birds when you actually stop and appreciate them with that yellow bill, the white around the eye, and that nice orange color to the underside. This is a bird that I was hoping to see today but almost missed. Someone called out as they were scanning in their scope that they had some wood ducks. And right as they were calling them out, the wood ducks dove into the marsh and went out of sight. But fortunately for me, they picked back up and I got this photo of four wood ducks. So you can see the left three are males and the right one is a female. Here we have two young bald eagles high overhead. And if we just focus on the shape of the birds, notice that bald eagles have relatively large heads. And we'll see in comparison to golden eagles that golden eagles have much smaller heads. So it gives them a slightly different shape. Also notice that both of these eagles have a lot of white in the underwing area, especially this wing pit area right next to the body. And when you see a lot of white in that area, that's a sign that you're seeing a young bald eagle rather than a golden eagle. Golden eagles, when they have white in the wings, they're in very clean patches in the center of the wing. They're not sort of this splotchy white all underneath the underside of the wings and body. Here's another immature bald eagle. And again, notice it's a large, dark bird with some splotchy white underneath, especially here in the wing pit area. And it has a large head. Here we have a juvenile bald eagle. So this is one that would have been born last summer. We can see that all of the feathers in the wing are the same length, meaning they're the same age. The juvenile feathers are slightly longer than the feathers they replace them with. So if there's an even trailing edge to the wing like this, we know it's a juvenile, whereas second and third years have two different length of wing feathers. We also see this pale inner primary area on both wings. That's another sign of juvenile or first year bald eagles. Here we have some large white birds high overhead. Are these more snow geese? Well, let's take a look. Do we see any black in the wingtips? No, we don't. So these are actually not snow geese, but these are tundra swans. And we also heard them calling. That was the thing that first drew our attention to them. Here's a few of the tundra swans dropping onto the bay, and we can see those black bills. So we know that they're not mute swans. And we don't really see trumpeter swans in migrating flocks. If we get a trumpeter swan, it's usually one or two, or maybe just a couple, but we don't see migrating flocks of trumpeter swans. So when we see a flock of swans like this, we can just assume that they are tundra swans, and a lot of times we'll hear them calling to help confirm that even further. And here's a photo from a little while later when some of the tundra swans were leaving the bay to continue their migration. Here we have two female mergansers. On the left, we have a common merganser, and on the right, we have a smaller hooded merganser. Here we have a kind of black bird. We can see that it's mostly dark underneath, but with the sunlight hitting it, we get some purple and green iridescence to the head. And we see that this bird has a really long tail. So this is actually a common grackle. 
And again, to have them this early in the season is maybe a sign of an early spring. Taking a look at the eBird checklist from today, I had 51 species, which is a really good total for the first day of the season. Taking a look at the hawk count report, we see that today for our migrant raptors, we had 14 turkey vultures, 8 bald eagles, 1 cooper's hawk, 3 red-tailed hawks, and 1 golden eagle for a total of 27 migrants. And let me say about the golden eagle, spotted it way out in front in the scope and was able to identify it, and then it circled and climbed really, really high. And by the time it went by, someone was still watching it, and I couldn't even find it again in my binoculars. So no photos of that, but it was another adult golden eagle, just like the one I saw yesterday. Today's birds, combined with the days that were counted in February, bring this season total to 183 migrating raptors. And taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking like rain showers early with overcast skies later, high in the upper 40s, and light south-southeast winds, chance of rain 60%. So they're favorable winds overall for migration in that they're southerly, but with it being kind of a gloomy and possibly rainy day, I think that will hold back the raptor migration, especially since this time of the season, a lot of the migrants we're getting are things like eagles and red tails that really want a little bit of sunshine. Later on, when we're more into the sharp shins and kestrels and harriers, they'll push through um, on the rainy days or the gloomy days. They don't mind flapping and using a bit of energy, but the stuff we're seeing now mostly want thermals and a little bit of sunshine. So I'm a little bit pessimistic about the overall raptor numbers for tomorrow, especially since we're so early in March still. But I think with the southerly winds tonight, we could get other species migrating and then maybe the rain will knock them down onto the bay. So it could be a good day for waterfowl and things like that, and maybe some new songbird arrivals. For Sunday, it's looking mostly cloudy with a high in the upper 40s, but the winds will be from the east at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so not a very favorable wind direction for us, would only expect light migration. And Monday is looking partly cloudy and really warm, high up in the 60s, high of 61, and light to moderate southeasterly winds, so it's a somewhat favorable wind direction, and I would expect that we have some raptor activity for Monday. All right, a big thank you to everyone who came out to visit the Hawk Watch today. I think this was the most people I ever remember coming out for the first day of the season, and it was really nice to catch up with some old friends today and do some Hawk Watching together. And the journey is just beginning, so there's plenty of time. If you also would like to visit the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch at some point this season, we'll be out there every day in March, April, and May, unless it's raining or otherwise terrible weather. So hope you can make it out sometime this season. If not, I'm going to make these daily summary videos that you can follow along in spirit if you can't make it out to the platform in person. If you like these videos and don't want to miss any of the daily updates, be sure to hit the subscribe button. From Lego Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.